Hello and welcome. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran and you're watching News Night on DD India and DD News, your prime time destination for news and bespoke analysis. It's good to have you again with us. All right, on the show tonight, one nation, one exam, multiple jobs. That is National Recruitment Agency for you. The cabinet on Wednesday okayed the setting up of a new agency for conducting a common examination for recruitment to non-gazetted Group B and Group C jobs in the central government. In another decision, the cabinet approved a fair price for sugarcane farmers. We tell you why the National Recruitment Agency or NRA is a game changer. Also on the show, the Supreme Court orders a CBI probe into actor Sushant Singh Rajput's death. The late actor's family says it reaffirms their faith in India as a robust democracy. Will justice be finally done? And it's official, the Democratic Party nominates Joe Biden to take on Donald Trump in the November election. We get you a flavor of the race to the White House that is only just hotting up. Plus, the latest on the coup in the West African country of Mali and news and updates from India and around the world. All that and much, much more coming up over the next one hour. But first, as always, the headlines. Cabinet approves a national recruitment agency for conducting a common test for screening candidates for jobs in public sector banks and non-gazetted Group B or Group C posts in the central government. Prime Minister Modi says it will be a boon for the youth and also boost transparency. Cabinet also approves a fair sugarcane price. The sugar mills will pay a farmer for the 2020-21 season. Fixes 285 rupees per quintal for a basic recovery rate of 10%. The Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvannandapuram airports to be leased out through a public-private partnership. Cabinet okays a one-time relaxation in working capital limit norm for DISCOMs under the Ujwal DISCOM Assurance Yojana to get loans as part of the 90,000 crore rupee liquidity infusion scheme. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh addresses top naval commanders at the inaugural session of a three-day conference complements the force for protecting the nation's maritime interests. The Supreme Court orders a CBI probe into actor Sushant Singh Rajput's death. The court said the FIR registered in Bihar based on a complaint by Sushant's father was correct, asks Mumbai police to hand over all the evidence collected so far in the case to the CBI. India scales another peak in the fight against COVID-19. Total recoveries cross 2 million. India also records the highest ever single-day recovery of more than 60,000 in the last 24 hours. The recovery rate crosses 73%. The flood situation remains grim in Bihar. About 82 lakh people across 16 districts affected. Normal drive returns to most parts of Assam. Rain slash many parts of the national capital and NCR areas. And Joe Biden is officially nominated as the Democratic Party's candidate for the US presidential election in November. Biden calls it the honor of his life. Right, let me dive straight into our cover story. India will soon get a national recruitment agency. Now, the cabinet on Wednesday okay the setting up of a new agency for conducting a common examination for non-gazetted groups B and C jobs in the central government. Now, why is the national recruitment agency a radical and revolutionary idea? How is it a game changer? And what is the common eligibility test all about? Find out in the next report. 
National Recruitment Agency announced. This historic decision paves the way for a transformational reform in the recruitment process for central government jobs. This is going to bring in ease of selection, ease of recruitment and thereby also ease of living for the aspirant candidates, particularly the youth. See, let's not forget that in India, in the government of sector, we have as many as at least 20 recruitment agencies. They keep conducting their selection processes from time to time at different times of the year. And therefore, it may not be easily feasible for each candidate to appear in each of these tests. It is a path-breaking reform as it uses technology to eradicate malpractices it reduces the recruitment cycle, the NRA will conduct mock tests for the rural youth and it will have a 24-7 helpline and grievance redressal portal. The idea of having a common eligibility test as we have conceived and as we named it CET would in the beginning include three recruitment agencies namely the Staff Selection Commission, the SSC, the Railway Recruitment Board, the RRB and the Banking Sector and this would be a preliminary test. So the advantage is that instead of appearing at multiple places, the multiplicity of tests and the multiplicity of centers, a candidate would have the freedom to appear in a single test. And if he makes it through that preliminary examination, his eligibility for the next phase of selection in that given sector would remain alive for three years. On an average, 2.5 crore to 3 crore candidates apply for these examinations. The NRA will screen or shortlist candidates for non-technical posts of Groups B and C of the central government. A special focus on creating examination infrastructure in the 117 aspirational districts would go a long way in affording access to candidates at a place nearer to where they live. And particularly for three sections of society, A, those who belong to the lower, lower economic strata, they may not be able to afford being available at different centers on different occasions to actually avail of the opportunity of uh, uh, appearing before the selection uh, process and they would therefore be deprived of their fundamental right. B, those who live in very far-flung areas, remote areas may not have easy accessibility to the center which has been earmarked by the given recruitment agency. C, many of the female candidates whom we have observed find it difficult to travel outside their uh, native place for reasons of, of having a proper residence over there or being escorted by a, by, by a member of the family. And therefore, let's not forget we have about uh, 2.5 crore aspirant candidates on an average who every year try their luck in different selection process. Taking job opportunities closer to the people is a radical step that would greatly enhance ease of living for the youth. The location of a test centre in every district would greatly benefit candidates from rural areas in general and women in particular. Under the NRA, the candidates will appear in only one examination but will get an opportunity to compete for multiple posts. The CET score would be valid for three years from the date of declaration of the result. The best of the valid scores shall be deemed to be the current score of the candidate. Based on the screening done by the NRA, final selection for recruitment shall be made through separate specialized second and third tiers of examination which shall be conducted by the respective recruitment agencies. That is not all a single eligibility test which significantly reduced the recruitment cycle. Bureau Report, DD India. All right, let me break it down for you for the benefit of you, the viewers. Now take a look at the screen behind me, the graphic that we're going to play out. Now, this should be of interest to recruiters and the recruit alike in both the public and private sectors. Now we have six uh, graphic plays to play out. First up is transparency and ease. Now, Take a look at these uh, graphics. There's no need for multiple tests. Now, what happens today is a candidate applies for multiple jobs, sits for multiple tests. That th is a thing of the past. Now, there is no need for multiple tests, only one common eligibility test. Second point, pay exam fee just once. Now, as I mentioned, if you sit for more examinations, you pay more in terms of fee. So that is also a thing of the past. You just pay once when you sit for the CET. 
Third advantage is there is no need to travel long distances. Now, you don't need to travel from, say, from Delhi to Mumbai or Delhi to Patna or Lucknow. You can sit for the examination closest to your place of residence. Now comes common eligibility test. What is this test all about? First up, separate tests for those who have a graduate degree, those who have passed class 12, and those who have passed class 10. So three separate tests under the common eligibility test. Next up is the test to shortlist candidates for groups B and C in a central government. So the test essentially acts to screen or shortlist candidates for the groups B and C of the central government. Now, let's talk about you, the recruit. What is in it for you? You get more choice. In terms of a standard curriculum, the curriculum is same for all the candidates appearing for the CET. They'll appear in 12 languages, not just English or Hindi, but more Indian languages to suit and to be convenient to more population. And let's uh, take a look at the next graphic. The score will remain valid for three years, not just a few weeks or months, for three years. And you will have unlimited attempts, unlimited attempts to improve your score, but subject to the prescribed upper age limit. Now, that's as far as the you getting more choice is concerned. Now, let's talk a bit about good governance. How is the National Recruitment Agency a good example of good governance? Now, this saves time for the recruit and recruiters alike in, times of, uh, in terms of travel or applying for multiple examinations. At least one exam center will be there per district. So this will be closest to your place of residence uh, in any state or union territory. Now, it helps women in particular, people living in remote rural areas, and also the differently abled to be able to sit for the national eligibility test. Now, moving on to the next point. Now, you stand to benefit how? I'll tell you how. You can schedule a test by yourself on your own. You can pick a convenient date, month, and time. Now, you can select also an exam center of your choice as per your convenience. So that's a big advantage going forward. Now, the scores can be shared going forward, if need be, with both the private and public sectors if the government decides to expand the ambit of the National Recruitment Agency. And last but not the least, it streamlines the recruitment process. How? There'll be two tests per year, and they'll be fully online, fully automated, minimum human interface. And the test will have multiple choice questions, and the test will whittle down the candidates, the pool, by almost 95%, which means that only 5% of the candidates will end up appearing for the specialized examination. So those are the graphics which we prepared just for you so that you get to understand exactly what the NRA is all about. Right, now setting up of a national recruitment agency was just one of the many decisions taken by the union cabinet. The next report gives you a lowdown on all the other major cabinet decisions. Take a look. In a landmark decision that is going to benefit nearly 1 crore sugarcane farmers in the country, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has approved the Fair and Remunerative Price or FRP of sugarcane payable by sugar mills for 2020-21 sugar season. Based on the recommendations of the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices, FRP has been fixed at 285 rupees per quintal for a basic recovery rate of 10%. भाई एक क्विंटल पे ₹10 बढ़ेंगे 10 क्विंटल पे ₹100 हो गए किसान को फायदा बढ़ेगा पैसे ज्यादा मिलेंगे पहले पर्ची पे कम पैसे मिलते थे अब ज्यादा मिलेंगे पर्ची पे क्विंटल के हिसाब से तो किसानों को फायदा होगा अ प्रीमियम ऑफ ₹2.85 पर क्विंटल विल बी पेड फॉर एवरी 0.1% इंक्रीज अबव 10% इन द रिकवरी FRP will be reduced by 2.85 rupees per quintal for every 0.1 percentage point decrease in recovery. This applies to those mills whose recovery is below 10% but above 9.5%. However, for mills having recovery of 9.5% or below, the FRP is fixed at 270.75 rupees per quintal. जो फेयर एंड रेमुनरेटिव प्राइसेस है लाभकारी मूल्य बढ़ाकर दिया है 
अब दो सौ पर क्विंटल यानी अट्ठाईस सौ एक टन का दाम निश्चित हुआ है और एक परसेंट अगर रिकवरी बढ़ेगी दस परसेंट रिकवरी के आधार पर यह है लेकिन अगर ग्यारह परसेंट रिकवरी होती है तो अट्ठाईस रुपए पचास पैसे ज्यादा मिलेंगे पर क्विंटल The Union Cabinet has also approved a proposal for leasing out three airports namely Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvananthapuram under Airports Authority of India through public private partnership or PPP mode. These three AI airports will be leased out for operation, management and development to MS Adani Enterprises Limited which is declared a successful bidder in global competitive bidding for a period of 50 years. The move is expected to bring efficiency in service delivery, expertise, enterprise and professionalism apart from harnessing the needed investments in the public sector. The airport ka operation, management and development ka contract private players ko dene ka liye auction hua aur tender manga gaya tha aur sabse jyada boli hone wale ko तीन एयरपोर्ट देने का लीज देने का आज फैसला हुआ जयपुर गुवाहाटी और तिरुवनंतपुरम एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया ये परमानेंट प्राइवेट को नहीं दे रहा है ये पचास साल वो चलाने के बाद फिर से एयरपोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया को ये एयरपोर्ट्स वापस मिलेंगे In a decision aimed at energizing the power sector, the CCEA has approved a one-time relaxation to Power Finance Corporation and Rural Electrification Corporation for extending loans to distribution companies above limits of working capital cap of 25% of last year's revenues under Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana or Uday. One-time relaxation would help in providing liquidity to the power sector and ensure payments by state governments to Discoms. Those decisions of the union cabinet will give a new momentum to the post-COVID economy and would benefit the country at large. With bureau inputs, Arun Sharma's report for DD India. All right, so you're watching News Night on DD India and DD News. Time now for our In Focus segment, in which we are discussing about cabinet nod for National Recruitment Agency, fair price for cane farmers. Right, joining me are two very special guests, Dr. Suresh Pal and Mr. Yadavendra Mathur. Dr. Pal is the director of the National Institute of Agricultural Economics and Policy Research. And Mr. Mathur is a former special secretary in the Niti Aayog. For those not familiar with Niti Aayog, Niti Aayog, Niti is the acronym for National Institution for Transforming India. It's a policy think tank of the government of India. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's start with you, Mr. Mathur. Help our viewers understand why the need for a NRA was felt in the first place. Thank you for having me. And uh, welcome. You know, the need, I guess, has been felt, uh, you know, ever since, uh, uh, you know, last 20, 30 years mm -hmm. when the technology gave access uh, to really ease of living. And, uh, but unfortunately, this was never thought through. And even if it was thought, nobody had the courage to kind of bring this together. And I think the ease of living is what is really driving uh, this uh, implementation. There are 20 recruiting agencies and uh, three of them, the uh, uh, the Railway Recruitment Agency, the Staff Service, uh, the Selection Committee, and the Banking Personnel. So these three agencies, in a way, have in a way got together uh, to be on this national recruitment agency to have a common curriculum, mm -hmm. a common screening test. And this will, you know, amazingly lead to the transformation of the entire uh, recruitment ecosystem right. at the national level, state level, and even the private sector. Mm -hmm. So the kind of uh, use of uh, this, this aggregated model will directly impact the job seeker. And this is really put the job seeker first and it is it is the matching of the hr requirements of any organization which the supply with the supply side in the most efficient way the contours have been laid out by the cabinet today and this national recruitment agency will be a state of the art best practices globally in central government recruitment that would be immediately put into place for groups b and c you right. know that 
is a major disruption in the entire HR ecosystem at the central level, state level, hopefully, and also at the private sector. Mr. Master, uh, when I look at the NRA, one thing strikes me particularly, now, there's a certain design in what the government is doing. Now, we saw Prime Minister Modi in his first term in office do away with the need for interviews. He removed the need for attestations. And therefore, this NRA, the uh, agency, is a part of that ongoing process to, one, reduce human interface, and two, minimize uh, the scope for malpractice, isn't it? Absolutely. I think the... The critical and the central issue is the trust in the system. Mm -hmm. and the, the integrity the of the system. Integrity, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, doing what you said you would do when you said you would do it and on time, without cutting corners. So the uh, class one group A recruitment by the Union Public Service Commission has been a perfect model. Mm -hmm. And it has served extremely well. But that was only limited to class one jobs. Now, for the first time, that same kind of template of a one you know, common curriculum cutting across class 10th, class 12th, and graduate. So for group B and group C, as well as for the non-technical jobs in the railways, banking, now this beginning is going to have very quick and very far-reaching impact. So the numbers indicate that there is a huge push for government jobs and the numbers speak out. The rigor of recruitment uh, unfortunately, actually left a large number of government jobs vacant. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if government is unable to recruit. Government has vacancies, but the process, the system right. uh, was so cumbersome mm -hmm. and the demands of transparency uh, put in so many you know, inefficient processes that there were judicial interventions. Mm -hmm. Many state governments could not fill up, for example, teachers' job uh, vacancies and the students are getting affected. So in, in, in due course, this technology-driven, transparent, state-of-the-art use of technology, the ease of living, every district in the country has a physical center, right. use online applications, the kind of disruptions this will cause, the benefits will also be the private sector. Absolutely. Because they can use the same uh, scores, mm -hmm. the, the, the best four in three exams uh, any candidate has given, it can be used by the private sector. And most significantly, the profile of the applicants will right. change. Rural candidates who could not travel, mm -hmm. you know, poor candidates, you know, they couldn't afford the rigor and the women, the girls. Absolutely. Are. That is the big ticket. That is what this one scheme will actually unleash. Fair point. Uh, uh, equity uh, Mr. Master, hold your thoughts. I'll come back to you in just a bit. Uh, Mr. Paul, if I can come to you now, another decision taken by the cabinet this afternoon was on sugarcane, a fair price for sugarcane farmers. Now, help our viewers, uh, break it down for the viewers, uh, help them understand why and how this was, uh, the need was felt for giving them a fair price for our sugarcane farmers in the sugarcane belt so that they can, you know, overcome the COVID-19 pandemic in particular. Yeah, yeah, first of all, this is a, a welcome news for the farmer that they mm -hmm. are having a 10 rupees increase per quintal in FRP. And this is linked to a sugar recovery rate of 10%. If there is additional increase in sugar recovery rate, so they are going to get uh, rupees 2.85 uh, per 0.1% uh, additional sugar recovery. So it means maybe somewhere, depending on the rate of sugar recovery, the farmers, they are going to get around, uh, let's say, additional 20, 25 rupees uh, increase in their prices. In addition, uh, there are uh, the state advice prices. The state governments, they also look at the situation there. And based on that, uh, the assessment, what is the scenario in the state, they also uh, make recommendations uh, which is called state advice prices. And this is the price actually, uh, which uh, the farmers get uh, from the uh, sugar mills. So this is state advice price take into consideration FRP announced by the central government. And therefore the increase in price is almost in the uh, same proportion. Uh, we can just take one example, let's mm -hmm. say in the state of Pradesh, last year, mm -hmm. the state advice price was uh, 
315 rupees per quintal. So now it should be another, uh, let's say, 10 rupees increase. And if the recovery rate, which has increased in UP as well as Maharashtra, these uh, two major sugarcane producing states, certainly they are going to have significant increase in the prices. And mm -hmm. this is uh, welcome. Right. This will be welcomed by the farmer, particularly when they are getting this uh, raise after, uh, let's say, uh, some interval. Right. Now here we need to understand this price is recommended based on the uh, cost of cultivation uh, of uh, sugarcane, uh, and this uh, cost of cultivation takes into uh, a consideration all the factors, and based on that, and as well as the market situation. So based on that, the recommendation is made. Now here, in the case of sugarcane, there is a serious problem. There is a market is not supporting the sugar prices. Sugar mm -hmm. prices, they are very low in the market. And therefore, the scope for increasing the sugarcane price is limited because it will add to the cost of sugar. So therefore, whatever increase in the, uh, let's say, the FRP of sugarcane is there, this is a welcome step. You may recall here last year there was a I mean, say intervention by the government that there will be a minimum uh, selling price of sugar, mm -hmm. and that was uh, 31 rupees per kg. It was because the uh, prices of FRP, the sugar mills they are paying to farmers, and the prices of sugar they are getting from the market. So that is not really uh, economical uh, to them. And because of uh, they were lost, uh, you can say the uh, the dues uh, of the farmers, which the sugar mills were not able to pay. And government has taken another, let's say, measures mm -hmm. to improve the uh, financial position of sugar uh, mills. Right. And there, the major step is uh, uh, the uh, the ethanol production. That uh, I mean, government is recommending blending of ethanol, mm -hmm. and uh, its uh, price is again fixed, which is also quite uh, I mean, say uh, substantial. Right. So several measures the government is taking, and in addition, providing the additional support to sugar mills, like creating the uh, let's say the stock or uh, promoting the export. So number of measures the government mm -hmm. provide so right. that the farmers get their dues in time Absolutely. but this all depend on the uh, market prices of sugar Indeed. but at the same time we have to remember mm -hmm. that there has to be parity uh, between the price which the farmers they are paying for inputs mm -hmm. and what the price they are getting for their uh, right. output of the products so this is one of the basic criteria uh, which is used by the uh, commission the CACP to make recommendation of FRP or right. the MSP for other crops. Right, fair point. Coming back to you now, Mr. Mathur. Now, some would say that this uh, idea of an NRA, National Recruitment Agency, is a path-breaking reform. It is a game changer. Uh, it can, you know, it can have far-reaching implications for the recruit and recruiters alike. Now, if I were to ask you, Mr. Mathur, now can this this uh, foundation or this agency? be scaled up going forward to uh, expand the ambit to include private sector as well? Yes. Uh, so first I'd like to say this is, uh, you know, the National Recruiting Agency mm -hmm. will be an autonomous society. Right. And uh, going forward, the first task would be to, you know, kind of combine the curriculum. So the curriculums for these three agencies, uh, for them, that would happen. And uh, with definite inputs from the private sector, what kind of uh, skill sets they want and what kind of curriculum for getting the right talent, what is their need. So I think that process uh, is already on and the private sector would ultimately uh, be able to, you know, use this uh, score uh, to kind of do their own preliminary shortlist. So there's nothing to stop any private sector from, you know, calling uh, for a particular uh, number or a particular score or above to apply to their uh, uh, company. Right. So I think that the scores are a very transparent way uh, for discovering mm -hmm. uh, who they would want to recruit. And right. I think the private sector can jump straight away by using the scores. Right. On that note, Mr. Mathur and Mr. Pal, thank you so much for uh, sparing time and making time to be with us on Newsnight tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. All right, moving on, the Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered a CBI probe into actor Sushant Singh Rajput's death. The late actor's family says it reaffirms their faith in India as a robust democracy. Here's more.
In a big relief for Shushan Singh Rajput's family, the Supreme Court upheld Bihar government's recommendation to transfer the FIR lodged in Shushan Singh Rajput's death case in Patna to the CBI. The Apex Court held that registration of the FIR at Patna was legally valid and adhered to the principles of the Criminal Procedure Court. The Supreme Court said, in the instant case, political interference against both states is alleged, which has the potential of discrediting the investigation. The legal process must therefore be focused upon revelation of the correct facts through credible and legally acceptable investigation. As the CBI has already registered a case and commenced investigation at the instance of the Bihar government, uncertainty and confusion must be avoided in the event of Mumbai police also deciding to simultaneously investigate the cognizable offence based on their finding in the inquiry proceeding. Therefore, while according approval for the ongoing CBI investigation, if any other case is registered on the death of the actor Sushant Singh Rajput and the surrounding circumstances of his unnatural death, the CBI is directed to investigate the new case as well. In the judgment, the court has accepted that the CBI inquiry will not only help in bringing justice to Sushant's father, but also to Rhea, who has been demanding a CBI inquiry. Commenting on the role of Maharashtra police in the judgment, the court said, the records of the case produced before this court does not prime facie suggest any wrongdoing by the Mumbai police. However, their obstruction to the Bihar police team at Mumbai could have been avoided since it gave rise to suspicion on the bona fide on the inquiry. A fair, competent and impartial investigation to the unnatural death of talented Bollywood actor Shushan Singh Rajput is the need for the hour. When truth meets sunshine, justice will not prevail on the living alone, but after life's fitful fever, now the departed will also sleep well. Satyamay Vajayate. The counsel representing Shushan Singh's father expressed satisfaction on the order, while Riyas counsel said that they would cooperate fully with the CBI inquiry. The Supreme Court has said in a very clear way that the Mumbai police has done investigation. It was a very limited way. There was no investigation. We are giving a stamp of our own court. We are saying that this should be done from the CBI. Shushan's sister has also tweeted saying, There we go, finally. CBI for SSR. CBI takes over. Thank you, God. You have answered our prayers, but it is just the beginning. The first step towards the truth, full faith on CBI, victory of faith, global prayers for SSR. We are family, CBI takes over. परिवार की तरफ से आभार व्यक्त करते हैं उच्चतम न्यायालय का करोड़ों लोगों का आभार व्यक्त करते हैं तमाम चैनल्स का हम आभार व्यक्त करते हैं जिन लोगों ने इस मुहिम को यहां तक पहुंचाया और अब आशा उम्मीद जगी हुई है कि सीबीआई जांच होगी तो निश्चित रूप से सुशांत को न्याय मिलेगा ये तसली हम लोगों को हो गया है the controversy over Shushan Singh Rajput's death has been playing out for quite some time now. Even as the Mumbai police was investigating the case, Shushan's father had filed an FIR against Riya Chakravarti's in Patna, charging her with abetment to suicide, theft, wrongful confinement and cheating. News Night Desk, DD India. And staying on the story, Union Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad described the Supreme Court decision as a triumph of justice. Meanwhile, LJP Chief Chirag Paswan said not only will truth surface, but those who were behind disrupting an investigation into the actor's death also stand exposed. And BJP leader and former Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis urged the Maharashtra government to introspect on the way it handled this case. <laughs> आज मुझे इस बात का बहुत संतोष है कि माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट के निर्णय के आलोक में अब एक ईमानदार इन्वेस्टिगेशन होगा और जो भी इसमें दोषी हैं उनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई होगी उम्मीद है कि अब जब ये मामला सीबीआई के हाथ गया है और सीबीआई इसकी जांच करेगी तो एक लंबे समय से जो हम इंतजार कर रहे हैं कि इस मामले में सच्चाई क्या है वो सच्चाई सामने आएगी और ना सिर्फ सच्चाई सामने आएगी बल्कि वो नाम भी सामने आएंगे जिन्होंने कहीं ना कहीं इस केस को भटकाने का प्रयास किया इस केस की दिशा मोड़ने का प्रयास किया सर्वोच्च न्यायालय ने जो निर्णय दिया है उससे देश का न्याय व्यवस्था के ऊपर विश्वास बढ़ेगा जिस प्रकार से इस केस का हैंडलिंग महाराष्ट्र में हुआ है मुझे लगता है महाराष्ट्र सरकार ने इस पर आत्मचिंतन करना चाहिए हम ये अपेक्षा करते हैं कि सी जल्द से जल्द इसमें इन्वेस्टिगेशन करेगी 
and Bollywood too has hailed the decision. Actor Kangana Ranawath, who led the charge, tweeted, here it goes, humanity wins, congratulations to each one of SSR warriors. First time I felt such strong force of collective consciousness, amazing. Moving on to actor Akshay Kumar, who tweeted, and I quote here, SC directs CBI to investigate Sushant Singh Rajput's death. May the truth always prevail, unquote. And now to actor Shilpa Shetty Kundra, who tweeted in support of CBI investigation on the late actor's death. She wrote, lauding the Supreme Court in the decision, the power of prayers and so many wishes manifesting never ceases to amaze me. Hope the truth comes out soon for the sake of his family, fans, and above all, for his soul to rest in peace, folded hands, may justice prevail. And actor Anupam Kher and many others too welcomed this decision. Right, moving on, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday addressed top naval commanders at the inaugural session of a three-day conference. He complimented the force for protecting the nation's maritime interests. He expressed confidence in its preparedness to meet any challenge through a proactive response in deploying its ships and aircraft. The conference is aimed at carrying out a comprehensive review of the evolving regional maritime security matrix, as well as the overall implications of the border row with China in eastern Ladakh. And speaking on the unprecedented challenge posed by COVID-19 pandemic, the minister congratulated the Navy on the conduct of the biggest ever repatriation operation called Operation Samudra Setu. He said the Navy was instrumental in bringing home almost 4,000 people from neighboring countries in the Indian Ocean region. Now, under the Mission Sagar, medical aid was provided to the countries of southwestern Indian Ocean region, including the Maldives, Mauritius, Comoros, Seychelles and Madagascar. The minister said, accepting the challenges arising out of the COVID-19 situation, the Indian Navy continued to progress the operational, administrative and modernization efforts. He said, inspired by Prime Minister Modi's vision of Sagar, the Indian Navy has effectively carried out mission-based deployment to protect maritime interests by deploying naval ships and aircraft at major and sensitive locations. Right, moving on, the flood situation in Bihar remains grim. Delhi NCR 2 saw a heavy downpour that resulted in waterlogging. More in this next report. Flood situation in Bihar remains grim. A population of over 81 lakhs spread across 1,317 panchayats in 130 blocks in 16 districts of the state is in the grip of floods. The water level of Ganga River in Bihar is rising. During the past 24 hours, medium rainfall has occurred in the catchment area of Gandak River. This has resulted in heavy water discharge from the Gandak barrage in Valmiki Nagar. Nearly 1.8 lakh cusics of water was discharged from the Bansagar Dam in Madhya Pradesh. It's Impact will be felt five days later in Ganga River in Bihar. An alert has been sounded in Rohtas district, keeping this in mind. According to the State Disaster Management Department, rescue and relief operation is going on, war footing in flood affected areas. Nearly 3,73,000 persons are being given cooked meals through 478 community kitchens. Over 9 lakh food affected families are being given 543 crore rupees relief assistance at the rate of 6,000 rupees per family. Meanwhile, the MET office has forecast light to medium rain in Bihar within the next two days. So, we review jo kiye hai, to pura jal sansathan vibhag ke sare engineer, sare log alert pe hai. Aur yahi time aata hai. Last year bhi aap log dekhe honge ki yahan pani aane ka. These three images portray live being thrown out of gear in Delhi NCR due to heavy rain. A few hours of rain on Wednesday morning led to water logging in the entire Delhi. People were seen negotiating water logged roads and traffic jam. However, Delhi traffic police continuously is tweeted telling people about water logging in different parts of the city. Several vehicles were damaged in Saket due to school wall collapsed a result of heavy rain. Continuous downpour led to cool weather in the entire capital region. But people had to to face severe problems due to rain. Several parts of Haryana, Rajasthan and western Uttar Pradesh 
in the vicinity of Delhi NCR saw heavy rain. Seven cars were damaged. Total loss. Two cars were damaged. Seven cars were damaged. And they have a lot of extra walls. They have a height. There are no pillars. There are no base. While several cities of North India, including Ludhiana, had water logging problem due to rain, several parts of Uttarakhand were badly affected due to continuous downpour. Many roads were damaged due to landslides. The water level of Krishna River has gone up to in Karnataka due to rain. State Deputy Chief Minister Govind M. Karjol visited flood-affected areas of Jamkhandi in Balakot district. Belgavi, Chikkodi and several other parts are in the grip of floods. Flood-like situation has risen in Konsima area of East Godavari district of Dandra Pradesh due to heavy rain. Water logging has also been reported in many places in Bhuvaneshwar due to heavy rain. The MET office has predicted likelihood of heavy rain in the next 24 hours. Now the oil mark low pressure area is north of Bay of Bengal. And there is a depression of the chances of the next 24 hours. So in this case, heavy to very heavy rainfall, extremely heavy rainfall is in one place of the chances of 20 centimeters or more. According to the MET office, cyclonic circulation in northwest Bay of Bengal along with low pressure area has been formed, resulting in possibility of heavy rain in some areas of Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Odisha and Vidarbha in the next four to five days. While the with Bureau inputs for DD India. All right, now take a look at what else is making news around India in our national roundup segment. Former President Pranam Mukherjee continues to be on ventilatory support. According to Army Research and Referral Hospital, there's been a decline in the medical condition of Mr. Mukherjee as he has developed features of a lung infection. He's currently being managed by a team of specialists. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha e inaugurated various developmental projects at Baramola and announced Rs 50 lakh as the first instalment of the untied grant to all deputy commissioners across JNK for meeting public demands of urgent nature. During his visit to Baramola, he also approved 21 crore rupees funding under JKIDFC for completing long pending jetty bridge within two years. Five MLAs from Manipur joined the BJP after they resigned from the Congress party. These MLAs joined the BJP in the presence of BJP National General Secretary Ram Madhav and National Vice President Bajant Panda. Later, these MLAs also met party's National President J.P. Nadda. The death toll in the Rajamala landslide has risen to 62 after a nine-year-old boy's body was recovered in search operations in Petimudi in Eduki, Kerala. Chief Minister K. Parnisamy announced that direct successors of every person killed in the landslide and residing in Tamil Nadu would be given Rs 3 lakh financial aid. In Karnataka, Congress legislator Srinivas Murthy was summoned by Central Crime Branch on DJ Halli violence in Bengaluru. The MLA's house was burned down by a mob over a controversial post by his nephew that led to violence last Tuesday. In Jammu and Kashmir, an unidentified terrorist was killed in an encounter between security forces and terrorists in Molu Chitragam area of Shopian district. The Indian Army paid rich tributes to two soldiers, Prashant Singh and Ravi Kumar Singh, who were martyred in an encounter with militants in North Kashmir district of Baramulla. The gallant warriors made su supreme sacrifice in the line of duty at Kriri on 17th August. Maharashtra Governor Bhagat Singh Koshiari took oath as the new governor of Goa in Panji. Goa Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savan, leader of the opposition Digambar Kamath and invitees were present on the occasion. Koshiari read out his oath in Konkani. The Enforcement Directorate carried out searches at multiple locations in Mumbai in connection with the money laundering case against Tabliki Jamaat Markaz Chief Molana Saad and others. The ED is probing the source of funding both at home and abroad for the Tabliki Jamaat Markaz, which was held at Nizamuddin in South Delhi between March 13th and 16th amid the early days of the coronavirus disease outbreak in the country. President Ramnath Kovind paid homage to former President Dr. Shankar Deyal Sharma on his birth anniversary at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. 
The president officials of the Rashtrapati Bhavan paid floral tribute in the portrait of Dr. Sharma. All right, now take a look at all the COVID-19 updates from India in our COVID wrap segment. India is marching ahead in the fight against COVID-19. India has conducted more than 8 lakh tests for the second consecutive day. The tests per million have seen a sharp rise to 23,002. Positivity rate remains stable at 8%. Ahead of the Onam festival, Kerala police found an innovative way to spread awareness regarding COVID-19. They took help of a local artist who was dressed as a Maveli or Mahabali. The Maveli asked people to follow COVID-19 protocols, including obeying police directions, maintaining social distancing, wearing masks, using sanitizers and quarantining when necessary. The three-day monsoon session of the Uttar Pradesh Assembly will commence on Thursday with authorities making special seating arrangements following COVID-19 protocols and setting up testing centres near residences of MLAs for easy collection of swab samples. Assembly Speaker Hidanaran Dikshit has said that all members will undergo COVID-19 test in a day and they will also be thermal screening facility outside the house. Maharashtra government has allowed resumption of inter-district bus services of the State Transport Corporation. The inter-district bus operations of the Maharashtra State Road Transport Corporation MSRTC, were suspended in March after the lockdown was enforced in the state following the outbreak of COVID-19. United States of America has handed over 100 ventilators to India as part of President Donald Trump's offer of assistance to New Delhi in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The U.S. government, through the U.S. Agency for International Development in coordination with the Indian government and the Indian Red Cross Society, donated the second shipment of 100 new ventilators. In Karnataka, former BJP MLA of Shamraj Nagar, Assembly constituency C. Gurusami died of a heart attack at a hospital in Mysuru. Gurusami was admitted to a private hospital on 5th of August after testing COVID positive. All right, time for a short break. Keep watching News Night. Don't go anywhere. Pakki hogi bunia de to hase Hindustan hoga. Wonder Cement, a perfect shirot. आधुनिक और आसान होते जा रहे हैं परिवार नियोजन के साधन जैसे नया एमपीए इंजेक्शन फोन करें और पाएं परिवार नियोजन से जुड़ी हर जानकारी जोड़ी जिम्मेदार जो प्लान करे परिवार वेलकम बैक लेट मी नाउ गेट यू द लेटेस्ट अबाउट द यूएस इलेक्शन कैंपेन द डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी इज ऑफिशियली नॉमिनेटेड जो बाइडेन फॉर प्रेसिडेंट on the occasion, Biden's wife Jill made a headline speech from a Delaware high school where she once taught. The other speakers included former U.S. Presidents Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter. Delaware is proud to cast its 32 votes for our favorite son and our next president. California, home to our next vice president, Kamala Harris, cast 231 votes for Bernie Sanders. I am 200. Indiana casts 86 votes for the next president, Joe Biden. Thank you very, very much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all. It means the world to me and my family. With this, it's now official. Democrats formally nominated Joe Biden for president, vowing his election would repair a pandemic-battered America and put an end to the chaos that has defined Republican President Donald Trump's administration. After hearing from his home state of Delaware, which went last in his honor, Biden appeared live alongside Jill Biden to thank the party for nominating him more than three decades after his first unsuccessful run for the White House. The second night of the party's four-night national convention 
under the theme Leadership Matters featured elder statesmen like former Presidents Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter, rising stars of the Democratic Party as well as prominent Republicans who made the case that Biden would return integrity to the White House and normalcy to American lives. Biden's wife Jill, an educator, delivered the headline speech from a Delaware high school where she once taught, offering a deeply personal account of how their love helped him heal after his first wife and infant daughter were killed in a car accident. We just need leadership worthy of our nation, worthy of you, honest leadership to bring us back together to recover from this pandemic and prepare for whatever else is next. Leadership to reimagine what our nation will be. That's Joe. He and Kamala will work as hard as you do every day to make this nation better. Our choice is Joe Biden. Joe helped bring us back from a recession before and he can do it again. In 2009, Barack Obama and Joe Biden started with the worst economy since the Great Depression. And when they were done, they delivered more than six straight years of job growth. What did Joe do? He accepted responsibility for implementing the Recovery Act. His work created a lot of new jobs and started many new companies in communities across our country. Now Joe's committed to building America back again. President Donald Trump was in Yuma, Arizona where he asserted that he had kept key promises to build a border wall, cut taxes, and protect Americans from foreign criminals and invaders. He attacked Biden and the Democrats on their immigration policy. Joe Biden is the puppet of the radical left-wing movement that seeks the complete elimination of America's borders and boundaries. They want to take the wall down. They don't want to have borders. They want to have sanctuary cities. Lots of bad things they want, following orders from his boss. I guess his new boss is Bernie Sanders. Can you believe that?